Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series Week 4. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we are in the... We are into the winter semifinals, starting with Golda versus Stewart. And we'll see how that goes, because Golda is, of course, the favorite to win the entire tournament. But Stewart is still a strong player, and I'm really curious to see how they're going to be able to fight against this. It's not a, an easy match. I believe we're on Frosty Cove. Yes, we are indeed on Frosty Cove. Match has just started, and we have... Golda with Jump! There it is. There's the jump. And Cloakie coming out of Stewart. So Golda... Already starting out a little on the back foot. They've focused primarily... Oops, my bad. They focused almost entirely on their economy, but getting raided very quickly with not much in the way of defense. Okay, some... I mean, constables do deal damage. Not very much, but they do slow things down to allow other units like puppies to come in here and tear the glaives to pieces. Bit of a hard time for Stuart at this point. But Stuart is expanding reasonably okay as well. They're still a little behind. They focused very heavily on raiding and haven't managed to get a whole lot out of it. Though the glaive moving over here should be able to get in and start taking out these these metal extractors. Golda's commander is nowhere near defending them. There's a constable that... Actually, the constable will cause problems. Yeah, that glaive won't be able to deal significant damage before another puppy comes in here. Like, Stuart, you can't out-micro Golda that easily. You're probably going to have to bring in more units. Or heavier duty units. Or... Okay, this has got to be frustrating. Constable just coming in here all the time, and the Glaives cannot do anything. Because the Constable keeps coming in here. Although, thankfully for that, the Glaive next to the Metal Extractor at least kills it by splash damage. Not a bad play by Stuart, but unfortunately, Stuart, you gotta out-macro Gota. You can't... Like, Gota is a micro-god. They can't... But they aren't always the best at keeping their units alive. So if you want to win against Golda, you got to just take Metal Extractors way more aggressively. Which is scary, but that is how you got to do it. Raiding, especially when you don't have enough Glaives to deal with the slow, is not going to be able to deal with it. That's the thing, the Constable slow is what's killing all of these Glaives. Every single time. You have puppies coming in here to take them out afterwards, but... Yeah. Golda is doing what works. Using constables to slow down the glaives, and then the puppies will take them out. Not the puppies wouldn't take them out anyway, but... Still, it just makes it even easier. The glaives do even less damage in the process. Because the constables have slowed them down. Because the slow beam is a thing that matters. Although one of the constables does go down, but still, the slow beam is a thing that matters. A lot. Actually, that was a pretty valuable glaive there. Got rid of two constables, but there's so many other constables that's... a lot more damage that needs to be dealt before that actually matters... And Stewart's still buying an economy while Gota's just expanding over to the eastern side of the map with nothing stopping them. Like, unfortunately, it's this is one of those things that I see a lot of. Like, there's this... There's an impression that I notice with... Uh, like, mid... Even, like, mid-high skill players. Generally, you see a break somewhere around the game's Neutron Star-ish ranking. Where people below that rank seem to have this idea that they need to be very careful about making sure that everything has well has good defenses, making sure that they've got this super strong army alongside their economy, make sure that they they don't try to expand too quickly because they're more they're very worried about over stretching themselves, and then you get above neutron star, and all the players just realize no, the optimal strategy is to explosively expand, like build like send workers everywhere, build tons of metal extractors. Yeah, you might lose a few here or there. But build a ton of them. Maybe have a few defenses and key choke points. But otherwise, just keep building metal extractors as your primary priority up until the point where the map is split in half. Because once you do that, you just have to worry about fortifying the metal extractors you've taken rather than trying to retake your opponent's metal extractors, which they've already fortified. That is how players above Neutron Star play, as a rule. And like I said, it's this... There's, it's almost like players below Neutron Star think they're playing StarCraft, and players above Neutron Star realize they're playing a real-time version of Go. 
and familiar with Go, that is how it works. The players kind of just place stones around the board and take as much territory as they can, and then in the mid-game, fortify the territory they've already sort of outlined taking. Same thing in Zero-K. You want to rapidly grab a bunch of territory, a bunch of economy, defend it as minimally as you can get away with, and then from there, worry about fortifying what you have. Which is why Gorda now has 50 metal per second coming into Stewart's 25 to 30. So unfortunately, Gorda's just able to turn this around. They've gotten their economy going. They can translate that into a very, very rapid army push. And there's not much Stewart can do about it. Their commander is about to go down. Their unit composition really isn't that suitable for dealing with a bunch of pyros. And their economy is in shambles. And Gorda's just taking the entire map. So one phantom is doing decent work, but unfortunately it's just one phantom and it's not actually doing anything right now. It, what is it doing? It can fire a will, it just doesn't have anything in range. Well, that seems to be that. There's not a whole lot Stuart is actively doing. Just getting, getting a lot of glaives. I'm surprised we aren't seeing Reavers. Like, we're past the Raider phase of the game. So, right now, Stuart... I mean, they can start breaking down a little bit of Golda's stuff, but, like I said, they don't have the economy to work with that. This is their... Like, this this force here is their last chance, honestly. Especially with Golda's Pyros in their base. The force we see here is the last chance. The Pyros is going to probably... Is he going to jump out? No, it's going to get itself killed. Not surprising. Took out two delays in the process, though. But yeah, that army is basically the last ditch attempt to try to take out everything that Gota has built up in Stuart's territory. And if Stuart is able to rebuild off that, then that splits the map in half and gives Stuart at least a f something of a fighting chance. I mean, it's still very questionable because they don't have the unit composition to get rid of Pyros easily. But they do have the unit composition to get rid of all these metal extractors easily. Metal extractors easily. Do they have radar? No, they don't have radar. They have no idea what's here. They lost the commander. They have no radar. Gota has some radar on their main base, but this has a lot of vision. And knows they have an economic advantage and doesn't really care about losing units too easily. Like, does Stuart realize there's, like, very little defenses and a lot of metal extractors over here? I don't know. It's... It's not looking good for Stewart. They've got, they've got nothing. They've got, they've lost so many metal extractors in their attempt to take out Gouldas. And again, without radar, they didn't really know where Gouda was placed. So they couldn't really see, oh, I can just waltz my glaives in, lose one or two, get rid of the Lotus, and then at least secure more territory. And then send in a second force to try to get rid of the remaining Lotus and then secure it for myself. But no, they only have, how many of these do they have? They have three. They have three conjurers. Whereas, Gota has a dozen convicts. Sorry, constables. And yes, every single constructor in the game has Khan as the first three letters of their name. Except welders. And weavers. Okay, all the bot constructors have Khan as the first level, as the first three letters of their name. Constable, conch, convict, conjurer. And I think I'm missing one. Am I missing one? Well, anyway, Gota takes the game, thanks to early explosive expansion, and that's that. Also, what, sorry, what is the conjurer, convict, constable, conch? It depends on whether you count Spider Factory as a bot factory. It's kind of its own thing. Like amp bot, jumpy bot, shield bot, cloaky bot, all have con. Anyway, so back to the game though. Yeah, so as people are pointing on the chat. Or people are responding in the chat to the metaphor of go. And yeah, I maybe should explain the StarCraft one more. In StarCraft, you expand more slowly. It's a much higher cost to expand. Because you have to spend, like, as much as f eight basic units just to get the building. And then every single worker costs the same as a basic military unit. So you're investing a lot. You're investing what would be about 
20 or so military uh, basic army units worth of cost into your economy in order to do anything. As a result, the game tends towards pretty slow, gradual expansion around the map. Zero K, on the other hand, has metal extractors that cost a little more than most raiders, and a little less than vehicle raiders. Now, granted, you need more of them, but you don't have to have any support units or anything like that. You just have the metal extractor, and you're good to go. And, of course, wind generators in the back. So, as a result, it's way easier to expand, and way faster to expand. You don't have to sacrifice your army so much to expand. And also the fact that most maps have fairly spread out metal extractors, so you don't have these clustered areas that you'd be taking one at a time, you just sort of push around the map, which is why I related to a go board. Although, to be fair, I'm not a very good go player, so... <laughs> Still, that's what it makes me think of. Anyhow, we are, oh, right into the winner's finals. So that's great. So like we are going to be, what are we going into here? Where is the winner's finals? Still blue and glow. So still blue took out Legomenon. And that means we're waiting on the next match. I think. Yep, looks like. Okay. So we are going to be moving straight into Steel Blue and Golda. Got to do all their things. Got to have the music because I don't want that music. I want this music. I don't want that music because it makes it less obvious that I'm changing the game. Okay, broken folks in the chat saying that the way the expansion pattern works in Zero K could be fixed. It could. Mexus actually got a bit more expensive and tougher a few months ago. They used to be 75 and now they're 90. I think... I, I mean, you could maybe make the argument that if you double the cost of Mexus or... I don't know. Like, okay, see, so the thing is, it's not really a matter of the Mex cost. The big reason why StarCraft expansion pattern is so much different is because of workers. Because in StarCraft, you have resource gathering units that you construct gradually over time. As opposed to gradually all at once. But you have resource gathering units. In 0k, you don't. So unless you change the design to have resource gathering units, you aren't going to be able to really replicate that same phenomenon unless every single map is designed around mechs clusters the mechs clusters are, like, maybe twice as valuable as they are now, but mechs are also twice or three times as expensive. So expanding is still a bigger choice, rather than something you do all the time. And that... That would be... That'd probably make the game a lot less micro-intensive. That'd be an interesting experiment, to be sure. Like, there's modding capability, and... I don't know how well it would work with a lot of current maps because they're generally built around spread out mexes, and I think that spread out mexes with like double value, double cost mexes will just end up causing the same things we see now, but worse. Because the value of the mexes would increase, but I think if you had clustered mexes, then expansion isn't just a thing you do gradually as you walk. You have to commit to another area of strategic importance on the map. So... I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. Again, modding is an option. I think you can actually change... Yeah, you can actually... Well, you can change the rate of metal extraction pretty easily. And... Yeah, you could you could actually do tweak matches. If you... if Yeah. People wanted to try it. It's... You just have to go into the advanced options in the lobby. Set metal extraction to whatever you want it to. And set... And then go to experimental and tweak units. And you have to... You have to do some work on the tweak units because you have to write stuff in Lua and then base 64 encode it and copy the string in. But yeah. Perfidy dude guy asking about whether what happens if you change overdrive passive to be constructor assisted. If you did that combined with, with increasing the max cost but not changing the amount of metal extracted, that might work. I don't know, that would change the game a lot, because you'd basically have to have a factory... It would change the game to be a lot more like StarCraft, to be sure, because you'd have to have factories closer to the these various expansions in order to build constructors efficiently to actually use overdrive. 
But even then, I'm not sure, because Overdrive... I think if you Overdrive wasn't a grid... Like, if Constructors did a assist on a Metal Extractor, and that had the same effect as Overdrive, but Overdrive as it is is ditched, then maybe, but again, at that point, now you got to think about, well, how do you make the Metal Extractor map design decisions? You'd have to change the way the mech spots are calculated. Like, there is there is a widget that takes the metal map and turns it into mech spots, but that won't work for a lot of maps because a lot of maps have Lua-defined metal extractor spots. So you'd have to go into the map Lua and change where the metal extractor spots are. I mean, also, that would completely screw up the graphics, but for testing purposes, that may not matter. What? But yeah, you could change the metal extractor thing to basically, instead of having... Instead of trying to be as tight fit around the metal, like small metal map patches as possible, instead it's a very wide fit. And it gets like three or four metal patches, which would normally be like, say, three plus two metal patches. It turns into one giant plus six metal patch. But then metal extractors are also more expensive, and overdrive is just workers assisting. Again, you can, this can be experimented with. This is something that the game allows people to experiment with. It's a little finicky to do the experiment, but yeah, it's. If anyone wants to, you can start a lobby and play around with this stuff. It's absolutely within your power. Well, okay, the overdrive thing is a lot. That that wouldn't be as much in your power. But definitely in terms of more expensive mexes and other things like that, I think that would be fairly straightforward. Anyhow, looks like we are going to be on Fallendale for this match. Oh, I should probably mention this is indeed the winner's finals. Though in fairness, we haven't really been talking about that. We have been talking about how to potentially change the way that the game is played. Which again, mods are a thing that are doable. If you have any questions, the Zero K Discord has a modding channel. You can ask them there. And people will be happy to help. I mean, currently it's been kind of dominated by a mod called Future Wars, which is more of a weapons mod. I try experimental weapon ideas and seeing what sticks but yeah i'm sure you know if someone wanted to try more like high density low mechs count or low expansion count whatever type game or type mod yeah that'd probably be a thing just get technical support on anyway we are going to be starting the match pretty much now and we are back on fallendale fallendale is Oh, okay, Gorda going for spiders. No, sorry, not spiders. Amp bots. Still surprising. Steel blue going for rovers. So we don't get tank versus cloaky, but we do get rovers versus amp bot, which is even better because I haven't seen this in a while. Have I seen this on Fallendale? I don't think I've seen this in Fallendale. Granted, I haven't seen a lot of things in Fallendale. It's a fairly new map. Steel Blue going... Well, heavy on darts. Not even wanting to go for much damage. Just going for scouting. On the other hand, Golda, after the first constructor, goes for duck. A duck. No clear intention there. That's what you normally do. Yeah, both Steel Blue and Golda expanding roughly the same rate. And that is... Steel blue going to those darts. What can they find? What will kill them? Because they're pretty fragile. Hmm. Go to interestingly going for radar first. Before expansion. And darts coming in here. We'll be able to find Gota starting up. Gota going for amp bots. And... Well, they've gotten the information they need. Steel blue wisely keeping them alive. So is that changing the composition? Yes, it is going heavy on Fencer. Fencer, Ripper, not even building a single Scorcher. I agree with this choice. And so does Gota, apparently, as they're forced away. Their duck not even going to engage. Does not trust they'll be able to deal the damage needed to do to get rid of the Fencer in time. Well done, Steel Blue. Now, of course, the question becomes, how much does this affect Steel Blue's expansion speed? 
Because right now, Steel Blue only has the one mace and then their commander. Gold, on the other hand, has actually about the same. They have one conch and their commander. So far, so, so far, there isn't a whole lot that's really working out against either player. They're expanding at about the same rate. Gorda was a little bit more aggressive with their expansions, though. Their commander was sent out sooner. But, you know, it's not too far ahead. And actually, the darts, because the dart slow does, in fact, affect metal extraction rate. That is going to be a useful raid. Despite all appearances, that actually isn't a bad thing. Unfortunately, Gota is just going to get rid of all the Steel Blues Metal Extractors over to the south because there was nothing defending them. Ripper, sorry, a Fencer is coming in to save the day, but at least two Metal Extractors will die in the process. Possibly the Mason, actually, if Gota's paying attention, just goes to the Mason directly. No, the Mason will live. Never mind. Fencer's here. Mason will live. Mason will probably live. Actually, hard to tell. The Duck might just have enough confidence to go for the Fencer. No, it doesn't. That Duck... Gets rid of three metal extractors, does not get rid of the mason, most importantly, because that means the mason can rebuild, and there's no problem whatsoever. Like Steel Blue, they got the reclaim to work with, their commander expanded over here. They're still even with Golda, and they're just going to rebuild all these metal extractors right away. Like nine or 18 seconds a piece. Same time, Fence is going over to the north with a Ripper. Not much in place to stop the. Oh, Bulkhead! Yo! We have barely seen this unit. This, I, I mean, sort of the siege tank, really, of the Empire Factory. Not, it's, okay, they say this if siege tanks are a normal unit archetype that exists in Star, in, yeah, in Zero K. They aren't a normal archetype in Starcraft, they're a single unit in Starcraft, and that's not relevant right now. They are something of an archetype in Zero K. Fencers are kind of, are that way, crabs are that way, well, crabs aren't that way, they just get armor if they stop. Actually, crabs are most that way, come to think of it, because they can fire while moving. It's bulkheads and fencers that can't. Same time, though, Steel Blue, I mean, they're putting pressure. The, the key thing isn't that they're getting kills. The key thing is they're putting pressure, allowing them to expand behind it. And they are expanding behind it. Downside, however, is that they just lost a fencer, which means they just lost a bunch of their defenses over to the south. Which means that there's probably going to be another duck assault to the south taking on metal extractors once again. Which is kind of unfortunate. Fortunately, though, there are a lot of masons on Steel Blue's side, so they can easily rebuild and assist and just generally fortify what they have. And also, more importantly, as I mentioned before about explosive expansion, Gota and Steel Blue expanded around the same rate. So they have taken over about the same amount of territory. Just that Steel Blue is about to lose quite a bit of theirs because Gorda decided to attack over to the north where Steel Blue's defenses weren't, and over to the south where Steel Blue's defenses aren't. And Steel Blue, how are they so low in their army? They've hardly lost anything. I mean, okay, there's a lot of Masons, but there aren't a lot of Conches? No, actually, this is going to be disastrous. These Masons have got to go home. There's, they can't. They can't survive this. Even with two Lotuses, the Ducks are just going to be too much. There's, there's one Lotus down already. The remaining Masons trying to build, but I don't think Steel Blue is paying attention here. The Ravager is just out of range. Ravager, where are you? Where? Why are you not here? Where the heck is Steel Blue focused? Oh, the folks on the north side of the map trying to keep the commander alive. That makes sense, but unfortunately they got hit by the two-pronged attack, and they have lost two Masons already. Ravager is finally getting some attention, but unfortunately the commander goes down. In the meantime... Gold have taken advantage of their micro skill just to overwhelm Steel Blue with unit management needs. Losing, costing Steel Blue their commander and putting them in such an awkward position that I... I mean, they are at least fine in terms of overall economy and army value, but... Unfortunately, it's the positioning and unit control issues that are really costing them. And as a result, there's not much they can do. They didn't have much in the way to actually defend. Gorda with, th with three plays on top of the Ampod Factor just to spam out ducks. On the other hand, Steel Blue pushing out Ravagers one at a time with none of them really going where they need to. S having a myopic approach on the commander, which if it kills the commander, it doesn't matter if it kills the commander. It's This isn't going to work. That's not what needs to be defended. What needs to be defended is over here. Does Steel Blue have radar? Yeah, they got radar down here. Why did They should have seen this coming and probably had radar further up as well, although I think they might have. But that's basically what it came down to. Steel Blue losing from Gota attacking on two fronts. Economy was about the same. 
Metal Steel was a little lower. Metal use was pretty similar throughout. Army value, yeah, Gota ended up getting an advantage because Steel Blue invested a lot more into Masons. Like, Steel Blue is going Mass Mason. And unfortunately, Mass Mason doesn't get you a lot of defense. Which is exactly where Gota came in. Like, their metal income was pretty close, their metal used and produced was pretty close, but... Yeah, the army value for Golda, they just invested so heavily into that, into one big push. And Steel Blue was not prepared for a big push. Because nobody scouts in this game. For reasons I still don't understand. But yeah, nobody scouts in this game. I guess they figure that there's just a flow chart to the way the game works, but no! As we can plainly see, plates have changed the game. Considerably. And I'm... Very glad that Golda decided to use them. Anyhow, that is that. So we are going to be moving on to Loser's Bracket, but that will be after a short break. So taking a short break, I need to get some water. You probably need to get some water too. So we'll be back in a few minutes with the with some Loser's Bracket matches. Stay tuned. 